just, I guess we weren't renewed for another season. Hmm? Our show wasn't renewed for another season. All right. What, what day is today? Oh, we got to look at March. Yeah. 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 Everybody wait. <coughs> Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the uh, Tuesday, March 19th meeting of the Weathersfield Planning and Zoning Commission with the uh, clerk. Assist me with the roll call, please. Uh, Chairman Harley. I am here. Uh, I'm here. Mr. Hughes. Yes. Mr. Reichel. Here. Mr. Hammer is not here. Mr. Homicki. Here. Mr. Dean. Here. Mr. Allard is not here. Mr. Silver. Here. Mr. Edwards. Here. Ms. Antoniak. Here. All right. So if my uh, math is correct, there's nine of us, and uh, everybody's participating, although Mr. Silver just indicated that he's sitting out the first one. So there will be eight participating on the first one. So the first item is item 3.1, a public hearing for application number 2009-19-Z, 100 Great Meadow Road Associates, LLC, seeking a permit in accordance with section 5.3A.14 for accessory uses, including temporary wedding tent, handicap ramp, mobile food truck, restrooms, and a walk-in cooler. Hello, Kevin. Members of the commission, uh, for the record, Kevin Johnson, uh, Close Jensen and Miller. With me this evening is Mr. Chris Henney, uh, owner of Putnam Park and also the operator of River Restaurant. So you may recall we were here about a month or so ago. Uh, we introduced uh, what we call the master plan for Putnam Park. Uh, the application before you this evening is for phase one. Uh, that basically entails um, the outdoor patio dining, outdoor bar, the wedding tent, accessible walks, uh, mobile, a, a location for a mobile uh, food trailer, uh, restrooms, and a walk-in uh, freezer and cooler. Um, I know just a little historical background. We've been here numerous times, numerous proposals. Uh, there's been numerous approvals. Um, just a quick little summary. Uh, 2011, uh, this commission approved uh, the indoor restaurant and bar and the outdoor dining uh, and beverages, the patio. Uh, 2012, it was the elevator on the south side of the building. Um, also, uh, on plans between 2011 and 2013, uh, proposed bathrooms. Uh, were also approved as part of those plans. In 2015, uh, we came back, and that was for the elevated outside dining deck, uh, additional handicapped parking in the northeast corner of the rear parking lot, the dumpster enclosure, uh, the handicapped paver walk from the handicap to the outdoor dining, again, the bathrooms. Uh, in 2017, we came back for a change of use, a uh, change of office to a community room in a portion of the building. Uh, and that was also the introduction of the uh, wedding tent. So many of the components that are on the site plan, this phase one, uh, have previously been approved. Um, the ones that have not been approved is the mobile food trailer uh, and the walk-in cooler. Um, there are some modifications to uh, the accessible ramps. Uh, previously, coming out the back of the building, there was a switchback ramp and stairs immediately adjacent to the elevated deck. Uh, that's been modified slightly. Uh, Mr. Henney received construction estimates on that. It was just prohibitively expensive. So we developed an alternate scheme where we come along the back side of the garage, the exterior of the garage, and then cross. And then that works into a switchback handicap ramp system, which leads down to the wedding tent. Now, again, the wedding tent is temporary in nature, six months or less. Um, you get into more building codes if it's erected for a longer term and it's not a permanent use. So it would be erected in late spring up for six months uh, and then taken down and stored. Um, 
the mobile food trailer, uh, again, that's uh, located along the rear emergency access drive. Uh, we're cutting into the little grass embankment right there. Um, I don't know if you want to explain. Well, basically, in, in, introduce yourself. Oh, okay. I'll let Mr. Henney explain that. He's much more able to explain that one aspect. Uh, essentially, what's what we've learned now that river is open, and that we uh, are also doing uh, social events and corporate events, is that the kitchen facilities that we have are not sufficient uh, to handle the outside patio, uh, and and the other issue was, and this was always a concern of ours, was the, the distance from the lower kitchen. It was the first one that we built four or five years ago. Um, that's it's quite a run from there to the outside terrace, which is the the semicircular area that was this area that was approved a long time ago. Uh, so essentially, uh, what we what, uh, we needed the additional kitchen facilities in order to be able to handle this. And we thought that the best way to handle it would be to have a mobile food trailer, which uh, will be tastefully decorated. It'll look good. It'll be essentially, it'll look like a building. The difference is it can hook up to a, uh, a pickup truck and it'll be removed at the end of the season. And then we will also be able to use it for off-premise catering um, and do events elsewhere in the state of Connecticut. And um, essentially it's, it's, uh, it meets all health codes, it meets all codes of any kind to my knowledge. Um, and obviously we would be presenting that. Uh, the manufacturer of it has all the documentation of it. And that is something that as soon as, um, as soon, if we get the approval, then we'll go into production of that, uh, that element and all the plans will then be developed so it's specific to our needs and those will be presented to the building department for approval. And if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer. So, not that I want to stop you in the middle, but just for my own clarification, is the, the uh, refrigerator unit, the cooler unit that they're talking about, going to service that truck? That's that, that, that we need right is? now. We are out of uh, walk-in space. We do not have uh, the, the amount of storage that we need right now. So that will certainly help us with this, but I mean, we're, we're like in trouble. We need, we need that cooler space right now. Thank you. And just a footnote on that walk-in cooler, it's located um, in the garage in an area which is now storage. So there's partition walls right now separating that area from the active garage. Um, those walls will be taken down and, and the cooler installed there. Um, same for the bathrooms where they're proposed. Again, they've been on previous plans, uh, previously approved. Um, they're in the southeast corner of the building, again, at the garage level. They're not intended for use by <clears throat> people just coming into the parking garage or from, you know, tenants of the building. They're specifically for people down in the wedding tent or the outdoor patio, uh, so forth. Um, so I do want to mention uh, we did go to wetlands uh, last month. Uh, that application was tabled. Uh, we're hoping to get a special meeting uh, this coming week, uh, again with that commission. But basically, it was tabled. Um, we needed additional information from the MEP for utilities and so forth on the exterior. Uh, we just received those in the last week, and we have added those to the plan. So, again, that's why we were tabled at Wetlands. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. We are in receipt uh, of two memos from engineering, uh, one from uh, Mr. Greger uh, from March 7th uh, and another from March uh, 15th, uh, memo from uh, Mr. Gillespie uh, from March 13th, and from Mr. Dignati on March 14th. Uh, we did develop responses to those comments. I believe uh, you should each have a copy of those. 
and I should also mention you should also have a copy of the summary of what the food mobile food trailer looks like and a little narrative as to what that operation is. Um, I did meet with staff this afternoon uh, to just briefly go over the comments, Mr. Greger, uh, Mr. Moise, and Mr. Gillespie. Um, they have not had an opportunity to go item by item, line by line. Um, it was just to bring them up to speed. Uh, we are going to make formal resubmission to engineering tomorrow for the wetlands application, the revised plans. Um, so I just, uh, there's nothing uh, in these comments that I don't think we can't accommodate. A lot of them are just technical in nature. Um, and that's, again, we're just asking for site plan modification, uh, basically for the mobile food trailer, the walk-in freezer, cooler, uh, and modifications to the handicap ramp. Everything else has previously been approved in other applications. So at this time, we'll be happy to answer any questions you might have. Yes, sir. With regards to the uh, uh, the deletion of the handicap ramp as you originally proposed in your alternative, what's the uh, uh, the distance uh, approximately that a non-handicap person will have to traverse uh, to get down to the the uh, uh, your, your patio area? Your, your, uh, a a non-handicap person. A non-handicap person. Their their route. Well, there, there are a few spaces on the north side of the building, um, so that's probably a couple hundred feet or so from that parking there. There are available parking spaces within the garage level, which are just immediately down the stairs and across the emergency drive and you're at the outdoor patio. Everyone else would park in the front and come through the building, so that's a considerable distance for non-handicapped. For handicapped... Well, let me just ask you a question. If I understand the question correctly, it's it's exactly the same. That part, the non-handicap, is exactly the same as it always was. We still are going to have Correct. stairs there. Correct. I mean, that has not changed at all. Yeah, I I, I realize that. <clears throat> what I'm trying to do is is get a comparison of the distance that a non-handicapped person you know will be traveling to get to that area versus your new plan for how long uh, how long a distance will it be for a handicapped person physically disabled person to traverse to get to that same area from a handicapped parking space right or the closest handicapped parking space <coughs> so again at, on a previous approval there were three handicapped parking spaces included in the northeast corner of that parking lot i don't have the distance offhand i'm just guessing it's to the patio area it's probably 100 feet or so maybe a little bit more um, to the lower tent area it would be over 200 feet uh, we did include in response to uh, staff comments an additional handicap parking in the garage level immediately adjacent to where we're going to be breaking through that rear wall to the stairs so there'll be three handicap spaces in the rear portion of that building. So you just said there would be one inside just now near near the handicapped crosswalk there? We're creating a new one in, in right there. the building, right immediately adjacent to where this walkway is. And the walk comes down here. Yep, right. That. And then there's two here. You couldn't bring it down into this corner? Down into? Further down, yeah, toward the, the handicapped walk. And it's further away from the walkway. Well, the walkway is there, isn't it? That's the hole that, in the that wall. That zigzag. This is the hole in the wall. Oh, okay. And that's the only way you get to the handicap walk? And then there's walk. The exterior walk immediately adjacent to the wall that leads to the bathroom. Okay. And yep. then right on the outside is the beginning of that access accessible ramp system that comes down through the tent. So, again, just as a little historical background, when we appeared before this commission in 2015 for the outdoor elevated dining and so forth, there were concerns about passenger vehicles around the building. Uh, the commission asked that we install signage and a turnaround both on the south and the north side. So the only vehicular traffic is for emergency vehicles around here or refuse truck to access the dumpsters. Other than those two, Building. So, trying to you know include additional.
additional handicap parking down on this level, then we're starting to mix again to get the traffic and pedestrians, which we tried to separate the previous approval. So again, there's, there's one, two, three. And I apologize. I, I don't have the exact dimensions. I'm just estimating. Okay. Well, my, my concern is whether or not it could, you know, there, there could be an actual or perceived uh, uh, argument that there's uh, some uh, adverse discrimination that may be that may be exercised by your your modified plans uh, as it relates to uh, the access of people with disabilities to uh, your uh, your your pavilion area where your your wedding your outside weddings and so forth will be taking place. You know, you know, it would also apply to, you know, people that are uh, typically non-handicapped but may be, um, you know, may have some temporary kind of disability or something that may, that, that would be easier for them or safer for them to utilize, you know, handicap traversing versus uh, non-handicap traversing. And uh, I just don't want... Uh, if at all possible, there, that argument to to be able to be maintained. Um, has the building department uh, looked at your modified plans as relates to access uh, uh, for people with disabilities and, and the deletion of your formally proposed handicap ramp? I'm not sure if the building has reviewed the plans here. I'm not completely yet. Um, the Building officials preliminary um, review uh, raised a couple of concerns that he needs to research and, and make final determination in terms of railings and things like that. Yeah, I'm just you know I'm just wondering if 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 the proposed plans as it relates to people with disabilities may require a uh, a waiver by this you know the state building official. So, so Kevin, <clears throat> just for my. Clarification, how would you get from the parking space that's in the garage to the patio? And keep going, to, go all the way to the patio. Go down stairs, across. No, it, it, so there are stairs from the, in, from the garage elevation, right, and the handicap part. Where the wall is. Where the hand, okay. So, so it's not, it's not, it's, so it's not flat? <clears throat> from the patio to the basement of the garage, it's not flat. No. There are stairs there. Okay, I thought those were on the set. I thought the ramp was coming from the deck elevation. No, there's like a three or four foot I got you. vertical difference in elevation. Okay. So again, that's why we have that ramp still coming. Again, I thought that was coming from the deck elevation, not from the garage elevation. I, I, understand, I, I understand now. Thank you. I had a quick question. They said proposed lighting. Will the events at the ten area be done at night? Because I can't imagine there's enough light there for the path of travel on the on the handicap ramp. I'm just wondering when when would the events in the tent take place? You're asking when the events in the tent will take place late night, early well, that, that, during the day. Whenever people want to have the event, but there will be lights inside of the tent. I mean, that's I'm, all. I'm more worried about the uh, path of travel on the handicap ramp. Well, that'll be totally illuminated, and, and we'll be able to take a light from the tent and shine it on the handicap ramp. Okay. There are existing lights on the rear of that building today as well. Yeah. We slice it up pretty well. Yeah, it's well lit. I know that. It was just... Kevin, where we sit today, we, we're, we're going to be waiting for a response from the fire marshal, town engineer, town planner. Because your letter is dated today, as they, submitted. They each need to review. Review each line item. Yeah, it looks like you've dotted the i's, crossed the t's, apparently, because uh, it was quite an extensive uh, review that was done last week. Anyway, and it appears that the functions will not occur during work hours. Is that right, Mr. Henny? Uh, anything out there? So weddings. Weddings won't happen during the normal office hours. Never. Yeah, eight to four, whatever. They will not. And the lighting's been satisfied. The rails are something obviously we're concerned about. Well, all the accessible routes, they're all designed at 5% or less. 
So I discussed it with the architect. We're both in agreement from our perspective that we don't need railings. Once you go over five, then you do. But everything is five or less. Are there any highlights in the 30, 40 bullets that you've given us that you want us to be aware of? Uh, in terms of the responses? Yeah. In terms of. Well, again, I, I met with staff. Um, you know, there were some comments from engineering about circulation, access, and refuse. Uh, that's why I brought up the historical, um, you know, conditions from previous approval. Um, the lighting, probably the biggest thing is the lighting, uh, what the, the uh, cooler and the bathrooms. Uh, again, Point out they the are, cooler. They are in the floodplain, but. Point out the cooler. It's way in back there, isn't it? Excuse me? The cooler? Point out where the cooler is. It's right there. Oh, okay. Come on to the show. Um, there were comments as part of the review from Inland Wetlands uh, about the bathrooms being in the floodplain. Can they be in the floodplain, basically? Um, again, the architect has designed them uh, for flood resistant uh, walls. Did you just trace the path of a non-handicapped access to the tent area? Come across the... So, a non-handicapped, yep. if there were spaces available on the north side of the building, they could park there. If there are spaces in the building, they could... Well, I, I should mention, previously, or in the current condition, this access drive is peaceful. Yeah. 2015, I believe, So, from the tent, uh, excuse me, from the garage internally, come through the hole we're going to punch in that wall. And that wall is just, I don't know, three and a half, four feet tall. That's all. It basically screens the cars. Yep. The so, there's no access point from the patio down to the tent directly. <clears throat> there might be a grand staircase in the future, but everybody goes right. that way. So, going back to your question, Tom, everybody's using that path, right? 
You're going to take out those wooden steps that are in the middle there? The wooden steps that are there today are a liability. They're rotted, they're slippery. We really don't want to encourage anyone to come down there and want to traverse the grassway. So we're going to take those out. The gap that exists right now, we'll probably put a few shrubs in there just to close it off. Again, we want to direct everyone to this system where we can control them on a hard surface and get them down to where the wedding tent is. And this is going to be a great pad. It's probably just going to be stone dust and then temporary flooring on top. George? Yeah, um, two or three things here. One of them, I don't even understand what I meant when I read it on the weekend. Sometimes I fall asleep on this stuff, but uh, seriously, uh, point out what trees go. Is that mentioned in here? You're taking out some trees, maybe, is what I meant? There, Are they along the water? Tree, and, and was, oh, where the, wa the walkway is? Mm -hmm. I, I did the plan, and I forgot I took a tree out. Oh, okay. Age. <laughs> I don't know. I, you right fell asleep here. while you stood I, I was <laughs> reading <laughs> some of this. I don't know what the hell <laughs> I'm going to buy it. There's only one tree here that's coming out. Oh, okay. The shrubs are over here, and some of them took an old tree, and they're going to come out. But that's it. All the existing locusts, everything along here, there's some trimming right. and pullback of what I call them bases and whatnot to create the. All right, switch. you're trying to leave the natural trees along the bank of the river there very those, much those the same. Stay, yeah. yeah, no and, touch. And all the locust trees around the patio, they're going to stay in this okay. phase. When the master plan comes in, everything's gone and we do a whole new landscape. Okay, another question. You, is there any conflict with the parking, inside parking, and the freezer? I mean, employees walking back and forth, for example, during an event? No, probably not. No, you don't see well, that. Those spaces are typically executives, and right. they yeah. go in, they go up to their office, and they're there until 7 o'clock, and they come down and they leave. There's no traffic in there. Okay. Okay, good, fine. Uh, let's see, there's one more. Uh, past flooding, how high has it come down there, say the 84 flood and that kind of thing? Any idea? The highest? You tell me offhand? Since we actually completed the building. The highest that I remember it ever coming up is where we're talking about those railroad ties, those stairs coming up. It came up to almost to the top of that, and that was it. It's never been. It has never been on any of this area. Okay. Hmm. Well, what what year was that? Do you remember off here? Eighty four. Eighty five. Eighty five. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's probably the same one I'm thinking. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's it for me. Thanks. Thanks. Anybody else? I just have a question. Um, along the lines of what um, Commissioner Oiko was asking, your, your flood limits. I saw that you had the floodway line identified on the map, on the plan, and I know that now in your revised version you're going to include the 100-year floodplain line. Well, the entire site is in the 100 Oh, the 100, floor. okay. The whole site. And, and how much... Elevation wise, just out of curiosity, right? How much lower is the site compared to the 100 year water surface? So, the, just as a reference, the garage floor is generally about elevation 26. Okay. It does slope slightly because there's catch basins internally. The 100 year flood is elevation 28.2. So, there'd be plus or minus two feet of water in the garage mm -hmm. in a 100 year flood. Mm -hmm. How about 500 year flood? <laughs> on the third floor. Hey, don't laugh. Actually, don't it's, laugh. it's only, it's, it's probably Second less than three. Floor, right? Yeah. <clears throat> I don't know that. Yeah, it's not okay. a big difference. <clears throat> That's all. That was my only question. Thanks. Tony, were you? Uh, is there anybody in the public who wishes to uh, speak on this? It is a public hearing. All right. No other questions for the applicant? I guess procedurally, I just have a question before we do anything is, okay. do we want to wait until staff has had a chance to review and wetlands has their approval? Or 
Do we want to? Sorry, you're right. I forgot about weather. I mean, I, I don't know how much we can condition on things that we don't know about. I mean, although, you know, we just got the response letter tonight, and it looks like, you know, 95% of it is, I agree, we'll revise, that sort of thing. So I had forgotten about the wetlands. Peter, can you speak? So it's, it's, not to, it's not a um, wetland activity. It's a, an activity in the, in the flood zone. So in terms of the statutes, if you were so inclined, you could uh, act before um, the Wetlands Commission because they're reviewing this in a flood zone capacity if, if you were so inclined. Um, the uh, Wetlands Commission, as I understand it, is maybe attempting to have a meeting next week um, we're yeah, so that um, if you were to push this to your first meeting in April, um, that ac action would probably um, have occurred by then. And then at that point, you would know if they had any other particular problems uh, with the application. Are you in any hurry on that? Very definitely. I mean, if, if we have April, uh, first of all, I need to walk in cooler now. Um, April. That means we wouldn't be able to begin construction on the restaurant. You can't put that cooler in without our permission. What's that? You can't put that cooler in without our permission. I mean, we thought we could. We, <laughs> we, we don't know. <laughs> but uh, yeah. the other problem, the other problem is that uh, uh, essentially, if we don't start the restrooms, the restrooms are the key to everything. Obviously. The wedding tent, we could probably do fairly quickly. The restrooms, we've got to pour concrete, we've got to put some structural steel members in, and, and there's got to be a cure period. That's going to take a while. And if we can't get started on the restrooms, then um, it, everything gets set way back. So in other words, we'd miss probably... May, June? Yeah. And, You're kidding. And, no? Yeah. yeah. Well, really? Well, we're only talking about two weeks. Yeah. Well, he means so, the so time. You, so the, the restrooms were uh, in a previous application. However, the details of, of that had not been provided yet. Uh, but they have to wait till the Wetlands Commission approves all of those details, and they do a flood review, uh, and they get a building permit. So, um, so they probably, if Wetlands approves it next week, and they could get a building permit, they could get a jump start on that because it was in a previous application that this commission approved. If that helps in any way, it's, it's probably only gonna you think you save think a couple of days. Make some of those May, June time frame? I mean, that's up to how quickly they have final detailed plans and something that the building department can approve. So I, I can't really speak to that, but uh, I know they're uh, efforting that with their uh, design team, it's working on all the utility drawings and that stuff. It's in a, all in a flood zone, so it's gotta, be designed a certain way, so. Were you in the uh, staff meeting going over the comments? Would you characterize yes. them the way Kevin has? Yeah, I think um, they were, um, as you saw in the memo, they were agreeable to address the comments as we uh, commented on them. Uh, there are a couple things that I think are still up in the air. Uh, I, I would probably in this case want the building official to provide us with a written a documented um, review so we know what his particular issues are to make sure it doesn't impact you know the the uh, drawings any further than they already do um, so how is his workload these days uh, he's busy like the rest of us so yep. about a week ago and, you know he said he's up to here so yeah no, it's, it's, it's very busy these days so yeah. but uh, he has looked at them initially we discussed it again today so um, he's certainly aware of it and can probably generate a review relatively quickly. Okay. <clears throat> Peter, of the 52 bullets that were questions and responses, as I asked Kevin, are there any of them that you think are significant enough for us to table this? Or can they be an internal observation by the support staff? I think that's something you guys have to determine if you feel comfortable and you want to defer those um, those um, details to us. Um, I, I can't obviously speak for you guys. If you see something that's glaring, then, uh, um, but certainly uh, staff are gonna do a whole nother level of review and make sure uh, our issues are addressed, so. I've just read through each, each one of those and I don't have any other questions. I think what Tom brought up and 
Troy's observations. I think you brought some things, but the notations and clarifications on the plan have been addressed. You've looked at those. Kevin's given us a lot of detail. I, I don't know if you want to. Yeah, so I mean, so uh, addressing comments, addressing town comments to the satisfaction of the town staff, right? <clears throat> um, they can't really do anything without the subsequent permit, even if we normally do it secondarily, right? If they can't do anything until the wetland permit is approved or the flood uh, management stuff is done, um, you know, it's if they approve it, it's then we kind of approve it probably. So why don't we just condition our, if it's even necessary, condition our um, our thoughts. Yeah, most of the, it, these right? items that we've actually brought up are handled by, uh, you know, staff. other code or enforcement right. Uh, issues or authorities so uh, you know, I, I think many of the concerns we've indicated aren't you know really land use planning issues so much as uh, kind of you know concerns regarding various code compliance issues right. the only the only issue I I, I had was uh, is, uh, that's fundamental is the same issue that uh, rich brought out is, is you know procedurally and if we, you know, um, I tend to think that if, you know, that our approval does not, you know, does not uh, uh, rise above the, the, uh, the authorities of, of other officials that have to review this, so, and, and give their, uh, their blessing to uh, what's been proposed. So would somebody like to make a motion? I think what I'm gathering is that we'll probably move forward with this. So would somebody like to make a motion? Oh, thank you. We do have to close the hearing. Last chance. Anybody from the public want to add comments? Anybody here? Motion. Give me a first one. <laughs> a motion to close. Thank you. Anybody second? George, thank you. All those in favor say aye. 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 Anybody opposed? All right. How about a... A uh, motion on the application itself. I'm um, still reading the eight-page letter we just got. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead, Tony. A motion to approve application 209-19Z for a special permit in accordance with 5.3A14 of the Weathersfield Zoning Regulations for Accessory Uses, including temporary wedding tent, handicap ramps, mobile food truck, restrooms, and walk in cooler at 100 Great Meadow Road, subject to? It's probably redundant, but subject to approval of the wetlands. Of the wetlands would be primary. Um, and again, I've checked off looking at these 52 items. I don't know if there's a handful of them that we wanted to um, elevate to make them a little more apparent, Peter. I don't know if there's. I think maybe you just, maybe to break it down you just maybe can refer to the the March 7th 2019 memo from town engineer uh, Gregor yep. the March 15th, March 15th uh, secondary memo from uh, town engineer Gregor um, the March 13th 2019 uh, staff memo from yep. the planning department town planner yep. and the uh, March 14th 2019 memo from uh, Fire Marshal Dignati, and then obviously there are the outstanding uh, issues that have not been <coughs> noted yet uh, from the building official. Um, so I think that would uh, allow us to cover all of that if, in case there's any outstanding. And those would be handled internally with this, with you and the departments and the, and the sports staff. staff review, and then I also think many of them will be addressed by the uh, Wetlands Commission. Peter, if, if any, if there was that, ever that would a be my up. motion, I guess, uh, closed out. Thank you. Would somebody like to if second it? In, oh, I'm second. Sorry. If Thank you, If there was Rich. ever a hang-up on any technical issue, you could always even come into us at a subsequent meeting and ask us to approve, disapprove, or, or change. Right? If necessary. If, if it were ever necessary, yeah. We could certainly do that. That's happened once or twice in the past, but rarely. Right. Okay. All right, so we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All the Just one thing, e even if, uh, I would say that even if the uh, 
uh, after we would approve uh, the, the motion uh, on review, say, by the building official if he found uh, a billing code uh, violation or disparity, our you know, approval of this does not uh, abrogate his authority to rule on building code matters and, right. and yeah. issue a permit or, or not. Both, uh, both the building official and the fire marshal have their own separate code responsibilities that good, bad, or indifferent uh, exceed yours in, in many of these cases. So that is, that is true. Yeah, I mean, it is a practical <clears throat> matter if, you know, either of them had something that required the switchback walkway to be changed or moved, you know, that would have to be just a modification to the site plan, but they could go ahead with the other stuff. Right. All right. I'm just offering the note again to restate what Kevin said, that 2011, 12, 13, 15, and 17, this applicant's been before us probably up to 10 or 12 times over the last five to seven years, so. It's not like we're going in blind. There's a lot of detail here and a lot of uh, due diligence has been submitted by the applicant to our department staff. Thank yeah, you. I mean, and, and just kind of following up on that, I mean, things have been built as presented. <laughs> you know, there, there haven't been a lot of big surprises after the fact. Good point. Good point. Agreed. All those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? All right. Go get it done. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you. <clears throat> All right. Moving on to the next item, 3.2, <clears throat> which is a public hearing for application 2010-19-C, the town of Wethersfield seeking a special permit in accordance with section 3.2.E.4 of the Wethersfield regs for the replacement of two modular classrooms at Highcrest Elementary. Welcome. Good evening. I'm Sally Katz, the Director of Physical Services. With me is Robert Roach, our architect from Fryer and Associates and Superintendent Michael Emmett. Um, we are here to present to you currently there are two portable units at the High Crest Elementary School. Those units have far exceeded their useful life and are no longer being used. They are currently closed off from use. They are, however, sorely and desperately needed that space back. The application in front of you is to replace uh, the aged portable units with new ones in the same footprint. Um, we don't plan on changing anything. As far as size, it would be two classrooms um, fully outfitted for the use, hopefully for not as long as the original ones are there. Um, but it's pretty much uh, replacing in kind with what is there. And Mr. Roach uh, or Mr. Emmett could answer any questions uh, regarding the plan or the use of the use of the space. Any questions? Go ahead, Tom. I just have one, one, one question when I was reviewing the uh, plans and another one that's come to, to my mind uh, since. And that is uh, the, uh, the location of the, of the uh, proposed uh, new classroom modules, are they going to be on the same footprint as the old? Yes, yes they are. They're in the same footprint. We've also, um, we've uh, consulted with Inland Wetlands um, and also the town engineer. They both, the town engineer and, and Inland Wetlands have uh, reviewed it and have given their approval for the site. But you're not in the wetlands. Though. They are not in the wetlands. No, no, they're, no they're it's, and we flagged it to make sure away, so. they are 100 feet Definitely. away. So, but yes, it will be on the same the same footprint as what's currently there. I so we will to go be. To the school today, and I couldn't go there. So I was kind of afraid to go into one of those places these days with all the security. Well, so we were. <laughs> you know, <laughs> we will be demoing uh, what's currently there and and putting the new ones exactly where the old ones are. And the second question is the. Construction of the of the new classroom modules mm -hmm. uh, that's taking place in a in a factory 
and will be shipped on like a flatbed truck, uh, you know, or the components uh, and erected on site, you know, by I presume, you know, factory representatives. That's correct. They're uh, prefabricated uh, classroom units, uh, portable classroom units. They come together in a kit of parts on a flatbed. They get craned over, set into place, and with the demolition of the existing, we're also replacing the foundation, so we're not going to use the same foundation. So that'll get done first, and, we're, and there's a small connector unit as well. Then they'll hook up all the utilities, put it all together. So, so let me just let me just note that for the record, Peter provided the applicant with some comments on March 15th, and uh, the applicant responded on the 18th. And it looks did I say that wrong? Nope, I, I said that wrong. So uh, uh, Derek. Derek provided comments on the 15th and they were responded to on the 18th and Peter had some comments They were dated 13th and replied to on the 14th. Can you characterize the responses? Uh, sure. so I don't have to read them. Just uh, no, Did you say incorporated? <laughs> <laughs> yes, we basically um, we've responded to all the comments We're going to be including all the revisions on a revised drawing set that will come forward with uh, with the stamp and sign off for signature. Um, the comments were very, um, there were several that were uh, similar in nature, just clarifying uh, dimensions, clarifying if there are any trees to be removed. We're not proposing to remove any trees. There is a 48 uh, inch oak tree directly adjacent to the existing modules. Town staff said that they would trim that back uh, before the demolition. Um, and then we're going to take care of all the sedimentation and erosion controls. It's been trimmed quite a bit. Yes, <laughs> yes yeah. it has. The, the but tree it'd take warden. take about two grand to get that tree out of there. Well, the tree, the tree warden, in, in anticipation of this project moving forward, has already been out there to do some initial um, work on that tree. And you're, you've answered all the other questions, have you, uh, of the town? The, the roof issues, the screening of them, any lighting, uh, yes, all those um, questions, that's all. Yes, so as, much, as much as I could. Now, this is going to be put out to bid um, to manufacturers that fabricate these units, so I'm not sure of the exact, um, uh, exactly what type of units they're going to have on the roof, but we, we uh, assume that they're going to have a rooftop unit that's going to serve the mm -hmm. two classrooms. They've got a couple on the old one, so. Mm -hmm. Yep, right. So and anything that we could not answer, I mean, we can, we've can we anticipated a construction timeline, um, but we're going to have to wait and see after we put this out to bid with the bidder that we select, uh, how long it's going to take to fabricate and deliver and things of those nature. Tom? My apologies, but I've got two more questions that come to mind. <coughs> One being, um, are there any standards that you've included in the plans uh, that relates to uh, the minimum engineered useful life of, uh, of, of these modules or these, these classrooms? Or, uh, or, or, is, or is there an industry standard for this type of thing? Um, these are basically about 20 year uh, units. Everything that's going into them is, is going to be, uh, have an expected lifespan of about um, 20 years for the, for the final product if that's what you're getting at. Okay, uh, yeah, and the second is in the interior layout uh, for the modules, did you obtain or were, were there, was there participation by uh, the classroom teachers in, in the design? Yeah, with regard to the portables, we'd essentially be replacing what we have there. So just to give you a, a quick idea, we took these offline uh, back in the fall. We had a tremendous amount of water intrusion, and um, we now have relocated the classroom space. One was a music classroom. So the music classroom has relocated to the stage area. That has bumped the instrumental music teacher to a closet. We had to get approval from Fire Marshal Dignati to actually house the instrumental program within that closet. We also utilized the other classroom for our occupational therapist who provided therapy to students with special needs. Um, she is now currently in the superintendent or the uh, principal's conference room, uh, and the principal essentially has moved out of her office and is now mobile. So, um, in terms of the design, the um, 
units are actually just essentially rectangle, uh, rectangular units. There is no water source in there. That was one of the things that the teachers talked about, kind of the nice to have of having uh, water, running water. We're not going to do that. Obviously, these units will have to have sprinkler systems uh, per uh, town fire code. So we're going to replicate them exactly as they were. Uh, and I can speak to the effect. I've been here since 2008. They far predate me. So they've been there for quite a, quite a period of time. George? Uh, what are your projections for, for the need for these? 20 years out? Well, the enrollment, not, it's... Without changing school districts and all that. <laughs> exactly. So in terms of the um, enrollment right now, we've done a 10-year enrollment study, um, and Weathersfield is looking remarkably stable over the next 10 years, so we've projected out. We're seeing where many districts are losing enrollment. You're, you know, Glastonbury's and Simsbury's are seeing students leave the district. We will be stable where we are to actually increasing over the next 10 years. In terms of the percentage of enrollment as it is, Without the, even with the portables there at Highcrest, we're actually quite full. We're north of about 450 students at, at Highcrest. Highcrest right now, along with Emerson Williams, are our two highest uh, enrollments in terms of our elementary schools. So um, we see the need for these for the foreseeable future, certainly. Okay, thank you. Based upon your answer to my last question, which wasn't really answered directly. Mm -hmm. I'm presuming that the real answer to my question would be that there was no or, or very limited participation uh, uh, by the classroom teachers in uh, the makeup of the design. Yeah, we've, we've engaged the principal in the process. And here again, with regard to these portables, we see them as just that, they're portables. They're not permanent. So where I'd want to engage my teachers heavily in terms of the design is if we were to design a new high crest school from the ground up or to renovate as no. So we'd be looking at something permanent. Which does appear to be needed based upon reports I've, I've heard. Desperately. <laughs> George? Yep, along the same lines before. I hate asking this question. You don't know what's gonna happen 20 years from now, but I mean, is there some reason you never really went into building adding on to the school in a more permanent way, but you don't have any accountability for it. You haven't been well, I mean, it's, it, but it's a very valid question, and I had mentioned the enrollment study. One of the things we're looking at here for the long-range plan of all of our schools, we have five elementary schools. They date back to 1952, which was Emerson Williams, and as recently as I want to say 1973 for Charles Wright. In many cases, these schools have not really been significantly addressed since they were built. Highcrest, for example, built in the early 70s was back in the days of the open classroom. That was a really cool fad. Everybody liked it for a while and then it went out of style. So you have a building at Highcrest, for example, very difficult structure right now with the pods. So after Newtown occurred and we really had to focus on, as you mentioned earlier, the, the safety issue, we had all collapsible walls at Highcrest. So one of the things we did is we sought grant funding and we reinforced and built permanent walls. So somebody getting into that building couldn't you know, push through a, a folding wall and get into classrooms. So the idea here that we're looking at, we've done our 10-year enrollment study. We've engaged with Colliers International and Malone McBroom, and we're looking at a long-range plan for replacement or renovation of these elementary schools. We're looking at a variety of scenarios. We're looking at the scenario of, can we potentially do um, K-2 and 3-6 schools? Do we need five elementary schools? Can we go from five to four? Um, do we build new or do we renovate as new? You haven't gotten to that point. We are working on that now. We have not gotten to that point. And one of the things that we look at here in terms of the long range, this would not be something where we would be doing all five schools at once. We would be looking at a long range plan better than 10 years out. What I'd utilize Highcrest for, given the fact that it has the space that it has, we'd utilize that as swing space if we were building other schools or renovating. So, for example, if we were taking Emerson Williams and doing a renovate is new, rather than having the kids at Emerson Williams while we tried to do the construction project, as we learned at Weathersfield High School, we would move everybody out of Emerson Williams. We would move them over to Highcrest, assuming that we had a new Highcrest Elementary School built. So we're looking at all the scenarios. We're currently in the process of doing our due diligence, and we're looking at scenario planning. We expect to see that happen later on this spring. So when are you going to the voters? 
We're not at that point for referendum no, yet. Good, good question. I would imagine it would probably be a year from now. Yes. So a year from mm -hmm. the fall. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank you. Didn't mean to get into that side issue. That's all right. Anyway, good questions. Help. Thank good you. questions. Any additional questions? Any questions from the audience? Okay. Guess not, Tom. Thank you, Jim. Motion to close. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Tom. All those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone, anybody opposed? All right. How about a motion on the application itself? Come on, Jim. Motion to approve application 2010-19-Z. I'll no. second. Um, contingent upon uh, town approval of the responses, et cetera. Anything else? Did they gently relocate the vermin that live under the building? <laughs> it's in the specs. Okay. Yes. Uh, is there a second on that motion? I second. Yeah. Thanks, sir. Uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? There you go. Tom, Dan. Thank Little you very much for your time. Thank you. Thank Thank you. you. Motion we approve the minutes of March 5th. Second. Any edits, George? Uh, no, because I only read half of it. No, I, read half. The, I read the other half and it was fine. Yeah, yeah I, I, I can clear with the second half only. I read the whole thing, but I wasn't here. Well, I didn't get the minutes in my packet. And of course, they're always perfect, anyways. All right, uh, All those in favor, say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? All right. Apparently, you can vote when you're not there. I just yep. did. Yeah. You can. Um, what else? Staff reports? Just a, just a couple couple things. Next week is the uh, CFPZA um, annual meeting. For those of you who uh, signed up for that, uh, the following week, uh, you should have gotten an email on this. Is the uh, mayor is sponsoring an economic development uh, training workshop on April 3rd. Uh, they have invited. Uh, all of the land use commissions to attend. So uh, please, if you can make it that night, it's at 6.30 on April 3rd, uh, please sign up via the email link that you were sent or uh, let me know so that I can add you to the distribution list. Uh, there's a minimum number of attendees in order to uh, have the event, which is being um, sponsored by uh, the Connecticut Economic Development Association and the uh, CERC organization. So uh, they would love to have as many uh, Planning and Zoning Commission members, as well as the other boards and commissions, attend. Uh, it's about a 90-minute session. It'll be held right here in council chambers. Uh, you also uh, should have received, I handed it out uh, before the meeting, uh, I asked the uh, zoning officer and the property maintenance officer to provide you with some information on uh, last year's uh, enforcement uh, activity. So uh, just in quick uh, summary, as you can see from uh, at least the property maintenance, the vast majority uh, of his uh, activity uh, was related to high grass and overgrown vegetation. Um, and the most active months were uh, May, June, and August, uh, at least for property maintenance. He had a total of 146 cases. And then in terms of zoning uh, enforcement, uh, he had a total of 86 uh, cases last year. Uh, the vast majority of them were uh, the illegal storage of boats, campers, and trailers, and then also unregistered vehicles. And the busiest months were May, June, November, which was interesting, and then July. So uh, he, uh, Charles started in April, so that's why I think the early part of both of those years was uh, basically m minimal activity. So. Um, just wanted to make you aware of some of his uh, activity. So is, is this uh, indicative of any particular focus area or, you know, is, 
Is there a charge that he's given in terms of focus on this this year or anything like no, that? No, he, he um, you know, deals with them as they uh, uh, present themselves um, uh, and uh, as or neighbors complain about things in their neighborhoods. So um, we have uh, tried to get him to be more proactive rather than responsive. And uh, um, so that's kind of probably going to be the focus for this year is to really get out there on his own rather than just respond to complaints from folks. Thanks. And then uh, lastly, you may have been following the freight train um, activity that's uh, coming down the tracks. Um, well said. So we had uh, an informational session um, a couple of weeks back. Uh, wasn't a lot of information uh, provided to us from either the DOT or from the railroad, but nevertheless, uh, the town engineer uh, is working closely with the DOT and uh, Genesee in Wyoming to do what we can to address uh, the concerns that were presented. Um, there will be obviously impacts um, at certain intersections uh, as this goes forward. They are going to do uh, a bunch of uh, outreach, uh, particularly to the school system, but also at the crossings. They're going to, I don't know, for a number of days before the train comes in, is they're going to have people at the crossings handing out information and, and letting people know what's coming up to the extent that they can. So um, you may or may not uh, hear about that. Um, and that's, they were originally uh, trying to, uh, planning to start in April. I'm not sure if that's still the schedule or not, but um, just in case you uh, uh, haven't been dialed into that. What, just, no. Go ahead. What are they gonna be carrying and from where to where? I mean, it sounded like it was more construction debris, you know. So the, the line, uh, Right now comes up from Middletown into uh, Rocky Hill. There's a lumber yard in Rocky Hill. So they have been using that portion uh, of, the, of the route. But this will go between Middletown and Hartford. Uh, one, one, one trip up, one trip back. Uh, they indicated uh, that it will carry, um, as you said, construction material, lumber, steel. Uh, but they also said uh, soil. They said specifically soil rather than yeah, stone. Uh, or some other specific product. And not trash. Either. Not trash. Well, they, they didn't say trash. Yeah, somebody did ask them specifically. Uh, it wouldn't be trash. And then, um, but they would not indicate who their customers were, uh, and they would not commit to times of day. Um, yeah, or I didn't like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, it would have been nice like if one of them going up there four thirty on Maple Street. Yeah, it would have been nice if they oh. said they will will try and avoid to the extent they can in the middle of the night, and they would try and avoid peak. Uh, times at some of those intersections because they are they indicated that the uh, the trains could be could contain as many as 25 cars which is a long stretch and may actually block multiple intersections at the same time uh, they do have to um, based on FRA requirements uh, lay on the horn in advance of the intersections um, and we are uh, trying to push them to make, uh, th there's only one gate controlled crossing in town at Maple. The rest are basically wide open. So um, they um, indicated they will be uh, attempting to pursue some improvements at those intersections, but that remains to be seen and is not committed to. So well, also is another big issue that came up and that was the uh, sounding of their horn. Yes. And the decibel level, which was what did they say? Two hundred. Minimum of one hundred and ten decibels. Ten, and isn't that decibel level? Lucky, lucky lose can't go above sixty-five. They're exempt from uh, our noise ordinances. Apparently, so, yeah. Uh, DOT really yep. said uh, the trains in this country apparently have dominant. They were uh, federally you know, regulated. The yes. DOT can't do much with them. They were first. It Arthur, comes down to they were first. Right. And standard. boats are even higher than that. Are there any state regulations concerning uh, safety? The yeah, so I was going to say, don't they have to get off? There's, a, get there's, 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 a, there's a, a list. Yeah. Uh, however, since we're not active yet, we're way down on the list. Once it becomes active, we move up the list in terms of priorities. But there are other, you know, uncontrolled um, crossings all over the state so we compete against all of those they indicated that a uh, controlled crossing is in the neighborhood in terms of cost of 800,000 yeah. right. each one and we have eight I, I think requirement that they had to have no no so 
you know, don't just, they have to get out and, and uh, walk so, across? So walk they used across? to. They used to when they last the last iteration of this run uh, ten years ago or whenever it was. Um, one of the uh, uh, engineers would get off and walk across the tracks with a flag yep. because of safety concerns. They are not uh, willing to do that now, um, so they are uh, going to install stop signs at each crossing, stop, stop or yield signs. They haven't shared with us exactly which of, of or, or a combination of all of that, uh, and the trains will be going um, 10 miles an hour is what they indicated. So it's fortunately, it's a relatively low speed, but nevertheless, still um, a train, still a, train a long train, a heavy train. So um, we have, you know, we're, so the town manager will be putting his, uh, our concerns in writing to them, and we will be continuing the dialogue about what we uh, would like to see uh, happen here. However, um, we're not sure what the uh, final outcome of that will be based on um, the responses that were received at the information session, um, which to a certain extent were, at least from my perspective, disappointing, but they wouldn't commit. Very disappointing. Yeah, to yeah. To at least try and or consider avoiding yeah. peak times and the nighttime and all of that. But uh, so hopefully uh, we will uh, continue to, to follow up with that and uh, minimize the uh, impact to the extent we can. So. Mm -hmm have to laugh because it was 20 years ago when they were talking about putting in walking trails instead of train tracks and people objected to it because they thought it would be disruptive right. to have people walking through their backyard. Here we go. Peter, can I say that I want to congratulate our town engineer for providing that plan to try to put a you know walkway along the track at 65 width but it's required by DOT that it be 100. And so I doubt that'll be able to be accommodated without maybe land taking or some other thing like that. So uh, it was, that was a little disappointing, but he did do a plan, a nice one for the, sub, the subcommittee in walking and, uh, you know, and uh, the other night. And I don't know if he had it at the meeting or not. Uh, he didn't bring it to the informational well, meeting on the railroad, but he had given, he has provided it to DOT right. who is sharing it with the railroad. So that is another issue that may or may not be uh, in play in, in, as we go forward in the future. Yeah, but we pr I, I appreciate seeing that. I, I will let him know that, yep. Thank you, Peter. Okay, what's coming up next time? Uh, axe throwing. Nice, beautiful. And drinking, right? No, uh, no. Uh, bring your own. They're, they're not pursuing an alcohol, a liquor permit at this point in time. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> bring, bring, fun at all. bring your own target too. <laughs> New season of Game of Thrones. <laughs> all right. Uh, motion to close, please. So motion to adjourn. Thank you. All those in favor, say aye. 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 aye.